knew that was bad. <laughs> oh. Try and get hold of another set of wheels because these are pretty knackered. See, there are plenty of these old tractors lying around, so we'll just put the word out and see what comes up. A few weeks ago I rescued this old uh, International B414 that had been sitting beside a pond for years. Uh, I managed to get it running and drove it out of there but uh, the rims are very rusty as you can see and they've lost a lot of strength and uh, yeah, I don't think it's safe to use like that. A local farmer actually saw the video and he's put me onto this International B250. It's not the same model but the rims should fit. I've measured the stud pattern and um, it seems to match up, so I think the rims will fit. And as you can see, they're in a lot better shape. They still have the original paint on them. Um, I think it had a, a cracked liner, so they pulled it apart um, and never got around to fixing it again. So yeah, it's just just been sitting around in pieces for years. I paid a couple of hundred dollars for the rims, um, but he said I had to take the, the rest of the tractor away, so here we are. There might be some other good parts I can use on there, like that radiator looks pretty good. The glow plugs are missing on it, um, they must have been left in the head, but it's got the, the same lever which activates the glow plugs, and this one is in much better condition. And also it has a, a solenoid there which seems to be a much better shape than the, uh, the 414. This room here actually has a big lump of concrete on the inside of it, so that one there Maybe they've taken it off, I don't know, but yeah, so that one's going to be pretty heavy. I might get rid of that actually. And once I've done that, uh, I'll give it a good going over, uh, fix a few other little things on it, like the glow plugs weren't working and it was fairly hard to start, so I'll see if I can get that sorted. Um, yeah, just give it a bit of maintenance, maybe put it back to work and see how it handles a hard day's work.
I've never seen a homemade wheel weight like that before. It's not a bad idea, but it's more of a nuisance at the moment. Um, and I don't have a front end loader, so there's no real need for it. And the other side doesn't have one, so uh, it would be a little bit lopsided. So I just take that off. But it's a good concept though, I mean, you know, it's a cheap way of doing it. It's obviously formed it in there with probably blocks of wood. Put some bolts through and just poured the concrete in. So yeah, it's a nice easy way of uh, making wheel weights. Right, that's the wheels swapped over. The front rims are not that flash either, but I'm not too worried about that. I mean, if they collapse, it's not going to tip over. Um, it's not really a big deal, but yeah, the main thing was to get those rears done because if they'd collapsed, the whole thing could potentially tip over if they, um, if they fold up. So yeah, it's a lot safer with the new rims on there. Now I'll make a start on fixing the solenoid. You might remember the solenoid is pretty knackered and I couldn't tighten it up because that nut there is seized on. So I'll see if I can grab the solenoid off this one and uh, use that, it looks a lot better. So that's the old one. See how badly pitted it is in there because it's been arcing and that thread is stripped so that's rubbish now. Yeah, that's so much better. Right, now I'll have a go at getting these glow plugs working. None of them are working at all that I can see because when you turn the switch, the, the battery voltage doesn't go down at all. Um, so these are the glow plugs here. They preheat the combustion chamber. Just make it start a lot easier, especially on cold mornings. And apparently this model does like a bit of heat and often won't, won't start without preheating. The glow plugs go in series, so the power goes from one through the other one to the next, to the next. They're not all in parallel, so that if one of them has failed, none of them work because it breaks the circuit. Um, so I think what's happened is one of them's burned out. We'll check the continuity on the glow plugs. Yeah, that one. That one's not going. So we'll check back in the other way. Yep. All right. So it looks like that one there has burned out. We'll pull that out and uh, check it. So there's the insulator. That'll be the problem. You can see that element is broken or burned out. So yeah, I'll order a new one of those. I've got another glow plug for it. So you'll pop that one in. I'll just test it first. I have found before um, from new glow plugs don't work, so we'll just test that. Yep, see that's going through one end, around here and back into there. That's fine, and it's not going through to earth. That's all good. Right. 
So it's going from ground through each one and back to this end so we know we've got continuity and that should work. Alright, so I've got the voltmeter on the battery. You see it's 12.6. This is the glow plug switch here. So when I turn that on, if they're working, the voltage will drop right down. Let's see what happens. No, still not working. So it looks like there's, there's still a break somewhere. It goes from the switch through the resistor and back down through the glow plug. So looks like I'm going to have to take this panel off and see what's going on behind there. That resistor is um, broken. Uh, obviously the power isn't going to get through there. Looks like we just have to replace that resistor there. And it should be good. Luckily, I have a spare one. Over there. That's still intact, so we'll take that off and put it on the other one. as well that wire so I'll just rewire both of them Right, I've added the new ground wire there and uh, another wire from the switch to there and that's all working well now so you can see as soon as I turn that on we get smoke coming over there so it's just burning off all the spider webs and stuff so I'll put that back in and um, we'll try starting it see if it's made any difference yeah you can see it's starting to glow in there now so we'll try that Perfect, it's so much better. That's amazing, it's a lot better. Oh, that makes all the difference. It starts straight away now. Before, I couldn't even get it running without the old engine start. So, we can do away with that now. That's awesome. Just replacing those few broken parts um, has made it a totally different machine. When I first picked it up, I changed the oil, but I didn't have a filter on me, so I picked up a filter now, so I can change that. Right, that's the engine oil filter done. Oh, there we go. Bit of rust in there. Not too bad though, considering it's been sitting so long. Drain that uh, tap on the block as well. Give that tank a bit of a flush. Yeah, that coolant was quite rusty, so good to get that out. Alright, that's it. Looks like an inline filter. We'll take that cap off and see if there's a screen behind there. Oh, yeah. 
yeah there is a bit of crud in there diesel comes in there and up through the filter and down through that hole so we'll give that a good flush out Change that fuel filter. A little bit of water in there. Ooh, that is quite perished actually. It's been there a while. This one doesn't have a lift pump, so I'm having to just do it manually. Yeah, and there's a couple of bleed screws down here on the pump. I'll loosen those off. I'll change the gearbox and hydraulic oil now, clean the filters as well. Uh, I believe the hydraulic filter is in there, so I've got to undo this and pull this pipe out. But yeah, it's full of crap in there, so I'll give it a quick water blast. Chocolate milkshake. Yuck. Probably a bit of fungus growing in there with all the water. Ooh. Put a bit of oil on that pipe so that the, uh, the rubber pipe slides over it. Yep, it's just gonna go. That should just pull out of there. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, that filter actually does have some holes in it, you can see there. So I'll see if the other one is better. And the 250, hopefully it's in better condition. Looks like it was quite clogged up and then busted through. There's some rubbish in there, man. Oh, God, look at that. <laughs> That's not good. I suppose it's done its job keeping that out of the hydraulic pump. That is a mess, man, there. Oh, well. At least we've got a spare back end on that 250. If we ever need it.
that one is looking a lot better. Um, it's still intact. There's no big holes in it, so we'll use that one instead. It's a lot better. Right, that's come up pretty well, um, nice and clean. I'll just put a dab of grease around that seal and pop, pop that back in. Do me. So apparently this reservoir needs to be about a third full, so about three inches on the dipstick. Yep, that's looking about right. This is the level bung here, so I'll just pour it on until it starts coming out of that hole. It's pretty much full. Tighten that one up. Right, the steering is quite stiff on the old girl. It works okay, it's just quite, it feels like there's no oil in there. So we'll check that. I think that is the filler bung up there and under here. There's a little plug up there, I'm pretty sure that's where the oil comes out. We'll try and get that out and see if there's any oil in there. I doubt there is, I mean, you can see all that old oil around the steering box, so it's probably leaked out, but we'll have a go at getting some in there. Um, and if that doesn't work, I might just fill it with grease. bone dry in there. So the steering box is full. Let's see how long that oil stays in there. That does feel better already, but I think it's probably going to need rebuilding before too long. It's, um, it's feeling like those bearings aren't too flash. But yeah, that is that is better anyway. So we'll leave it at that for now and just see if that oil stays in there. That diff lock seized up um, last time I used it. When I, when I pushed it down, it stayed down uh, because this was all rusty, so I'll give it a bit of oil. See if we can get that freed up. Yeah, that's, that's looking a bit better. Now, another thing I noticed was the hydraulic lever is broken off there. Um, that's the lift arm there. You can't really get it in there very easily, so um, I think I'll weld something on that to extend it so it's just a little bit easier to move because it's really fiddly to move it like that um, don't know what that does that's the draft I think but yeah it's that one there that lifts up and down so we'll try and find some sort of handle and weld on the end of that there we go an old screwdriver that should do the job That'll do it. The hydraulics are actually working a lot quicker than they were before with that new oil and um, I guess cleaning the filter out made a difference as well. So I'm definitely improving it the more I do. It's um, starting to take shape now. Oh well, it lifts out no problems at all. Um, that is quite a heavy blade too, and it sticks out a long way, so um, that's a good test for it. Hydraulic pump and lift cylinder are in pretty good condition, so that's good to see. I'm going to try and run it on used vegetable oil. Put a little tank up here, right next to the exhaust actually, and that will preheat it. Tear it off somewhere here, so I'll start it on diesel, and then 
switch it over to veggie oil because apparently they don't start too good on veggie oil and then once I'm finished using it I'll keep keep it running and switch it over to diesel again and just flush out the fuel pump with diesel so I think it would be quite a good experiment I've always wanted to do that and this is the perfect candidate for it being uh, not a really valuable machine because I know someone who's got a restaurant and they go through a lot of it so if I can get it running on veggie oil I can basically run it for free and um, not have to worry about buying diesel because it is quite expensive over here at the moment so yeah we'll rig up a tank climb it in and see what it does I think that'll do the job it's just mounted on there with a couple of bolts gravity fed to here and I can swap it over with the diesel um, once it gets running and I'll just sort of poke it in that hole when I'm not using it so it doesn't leak out Right, I've rigged up this twin cab filter and just put a funnel on the top. Poured the vegetable oil in here, that's going through both filters in series and coming out the other end into a catch pan. Got about five litres to do, so they'll take probably a few hours, I think. That's coming through fairly quickly. It is actually catching some water there. That's good to see. All right, we'll get all those grease points. I see there's a few missing, so I'll have to replace some. Who knows how long since that's been greased. Old rusty grease, look at that. Hasn't been done for a few years. that to tilt the blade. Another broken one. That might be why the uh, left hand brake isn't going because that shaft seems to be seized. If we can get that moving then the brakes might start moving again. Yeah that's better. So that left brake should work now hopefully. Yep, that brake is freed up now.
Well, it works. It runs on vegetable oil, no problem. It's just about empty. So I was running for about an hour and um, on pure vegetable oil. It actually smells a lot better running on the vegetable oil because uh, it just smells like uh, hot cooking oil rather than uh, diesel. So yeah, it's much nicer to operate not having to breathe diesel fumes. It did have a little bit less power on the pure vegetable oil um, and it was smoking a little bit more. So it definitely likes diesel better, but it does run on the veggie oil alone. Um, I think could probably mix the veggie oil with diesel, like third diesel to two thirds uh, veggie oil. I think that would make it run a lot better and you'd be only using a little bit of diesel. I don't know what it would be like long term. I guess the injectors may sort of gum up or the combustion chambers might uh, get a bit of carbon in them or something, but um, yeah, it seemed to be fine for that short run. It would definitely be worth um, doing a bit more and seeing what sort of problems I have long term with it. Anyway, it was a good little experiment and uh, worked quite well. Thanks for watching guys, catch you next time.